So our first goal in thinking about permutation groups is going to be to understand some of the contexts in which permutations arise, mathematically and also kind of in our lives around us. So I want to pick up on the example I talked briefly about in the introduction, which was the example of anagrams, but then also to look more closely at a situation we've already examined a little bit this semester. How do permutations arise from the symmetries of a geometric object? So first of all, on the permutations front, if I have a word, Let's say the word post. That's a simple four-letter word that happens to have a lot of nice four-letter anagrams. Um, if I take and rearrange some of the letters in this word, then I get other words. And every one of these rearrangements is going to be a permutation of the finite set of four elements, P, O, S, and T. Some of them spell words, some of them don't. Um, but the point is, any way in which I can rearrange these four letters will give me a permutation. You'll notice that I'm coming up with notation for how I'm doing these permutations over here on the left. Uh, we're going to talk more about that notation in a future video. But I just wanted to talk about this as one example of where permutations arise uh, out in the world um, when we're just thinking about permuting a set of four letters. But let's also pull an example out of geometry, in particular, out of the symmetries of a regular n-gon. We've already talked a little bit this semester about the dihedral group. And the dihedral group is the set of all symmetries of a regular n-gon together with the operation of doing one of those symmetries after the other. So the composition of functions is the operation in this group. So to figure out how to get permutations out of that, what I want to do is for us to look at the symmetries of a triangle, but pay particular attention to how the vertices of that triangle uh, are, are related to one another from before to after a symmetry. Right? So for example, if I take my equilateral triangle right here and I do nothing to it, so I don't perform any symmetry at all, um, then what I notice about it is that vertex number one lines up with vertex number one, vertex two lines up with two, three lines up with three. So I haven't done anything to this triangle, so its vertices are exactly where they began. So that's a permutation of the numbers 1, 2, and 3. It's just the permutation that doesn't do anything. right? It associates 1 with 1, 2 with 2, and 3 with 3. So naturally, we're going to want for that to be the identity element in any permutation group, the permutation that just leaves everything alone. On the other hand, what's going to happen if I rotate my triangle? If I rotate this triangle, then we expect to see the vertices not in the same place that they originated. If I just take it and I apply a single rotation. Now what's happened is that I'm associating vertex 1 with position 3, vertex 2 with position 1, vertex 3 with position 2. So I've done something. And what I'd like to figure out how to do over the course of the next couple videos is to express that permutation that associates 1 to 3, uh, 2 to 1, and 3 to 2. Use notation and figure out how we can use algebra to understand how permutations like that interact with one another. One way of notating these permutations might be, for example, to just list what vertices uh, end up in positions 1, 2, and 3. So for the identity, not rotating or, or flipping this triangle at all, I'm just going to list in order 1, 2, and 3. So I'm going to run through these, these positions 1, 2, and 3 and list which vertices occupy those positions. So that might be one way of notating the identity. If I then apply a rotation, then I would write down 2, 3, and 1 as the vertices occupying those positions. And if I run through the rest of the symmetries of this triangle, so r squared would be rotating this one more time, and there I would list 3, 1, and 2 as the notation for that one. And then looking at reflections, so the reflection of this triangle about its vertical axis of symmetry, is going to flip-flop the vertices 2 and 3. So now I'm going to list these as, uh, by positions 1, 2, and 3, 1, 3, 2. And then the other reflections I can do similarly. So this is one way of notating a permutation. Right? That each one of the symmetries of this equilateral triangle is going to affect a permutation of the vertices of that triangle. And what, what we notice is that every possible way of permuting these three vertices, 1, 2, and 3, is represented in this list. There are six different ways to permute a set of three elements. And so 
since I've associated to each one of those different permutations a different symmetry of my triangle, the conclusion that I can come up with is that every symmetry defines a permutation of the vertices. But conversely, for a triangle, every permutation of the vertices defines a symmetry. Any way in which I want to reorder the numbers 1, 2, and 3, I can realize by an appropriate symmetry of my equilateral triangle. So what we get is this really nice conclusion that the dihedral group of the triangle and the group of permutations of three elements, which we're going to call S3 in our next video, those two groups are the same. We have a one-to-one -one correspondence between the elements of one of those groups and the elements of the other group, and the elements act the same way in both groups. In addition to using this list notation to express a permutation, we're also, over the course of the next couple videos, going to develop a way called cycle notation, uh, which is going to give us a little bit quicker shorthand uh, that we can use for computation. Cycle notation is also nice because it gives us some algebraic clues uh, about how these objects behave inside of this uh, group of permutations. Um, but this is kind of a motivation. It's how we can get to permutation groups by first thinking about uh, anagrams and also thinking about symmetries of triangles, things that we already have some familiarity with, and then trying to abstract that out uh, to get the abstract algebraic properties of permutations.